JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 6th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar fell against all the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It lost the most ground versus CHF, GBP and AUD in that order, while it underperformed the least uh, versus SEC. The strengthening of the safe haven franc suggests that markets traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday and today in Asia, but the strengthening of the risk-linked Aussie points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. EU markets remain closed in celebration of the Easter Monday, while in the US all three of Wall Street's main indices gained uh, more than 1%, with the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 hitting fresh record highs. Investors' appetite softened during the Asian session today. Although China Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI inched up 0.07 and 0.20% respectively, Japan's Nikkei 225 fell 1.30%. In our view, the rally in US stocks may have been the result of strong US economic data. On Friday, non-farm payrolls for March surged by 916,000, while the unemployment rate slid to 6% from 6.2%. Yesterday, the ISM non-manufacturing PMI surged to 63.7 from 55.3, its highest level ever, highlighting that the world's uh, largest economy is recovering from the damages of the COVID pandemic at a very fast pace. However, Treasury yields failed to gain and instead retreated somewhat, something that weighed on, uh, on the US dollar. In our view, this may have been due to market participants digesting that the robust economic recovery in the US is unlikely to lead uh, to high inflation and monetary policy tightening. Yes, the Fed has projected that inflation could rise above 2% this year, specifically the forecast is at 2.4% year over year, but they clearly said that this would likely to be temporary. An inflation rate above 2% for some time, which is their goal for the beginning of normalization, is not expected until the years after 2023. On top of that, Fed Chair Powell made it clear that it is too early to start uh, discussing tapering quantitative easing, while uh, the latest uh, dot plot pointed, to, pointed uh, to no rate hikes even in 2023. All this comes in line with our view that inflation fears are likely to continue to ease, which could allow equities and other risk-linked assets to continue trending north. At the same time, safe havens like uh, the yen and the franc may come back under selling interest. As for the dollar, that's uh, the tricky part. Sometimes it has been strengthening on signs of, um, of a fast uh, recovery in, uh, in the US, while uh, in other times uh, uh, it's uh, been uh, pulling back if treasury yields do so, do so as well. With uh, its recent performance uh, pointing to no clear direction, we prefer to stay sidelined for now with regards to the greenback and wait to see how traders will eventually decide to treat it. Now overnight, during the Asian session today, we had an RBA monetary policy decision with the bank deciding to keep its interest rate and the target of its three-year government bond yields unchanged at 0.10%. Officials also kept uh, untouched the parameters of uh, the term funding facility and the government uh, purchase program untouched, 
While in the accompanying statement, they repeated that the economic recovery in Australia is well underway and that it is stronger than had been expected. However, they, they added uh, again that wage and price pressures are subdued that are expected to remain so for, for some years, which means that uh, they are unlikely to start thinking normalization anytime soon. That said, they are unlikely to ease policy further either, as they maintained uh, their optimism with regards to the economy and as uh, they did not appear much worried with regards to the Aussie's trading levels. They just said that the Australian dollar remains in the upper end of the range of recent years. The currency did not react at the time of the release, suggesting that with the RBA now seen sidelined uh, for the months or even the years to come, its broader direction is likely to depend on the overall market sentiment. Given that we see the case for further improvement, we believe that the Aussie is likely to perform relatively well, at least against uh, the safe havens like the Japanese yen. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the European session, we get Eurozone's unemployment rate for February and the Centix Investor Confidence Index for April. The bloc's unemployment rate is forecast to have held steady at 8.1%, while the Centix Index is anticipated to have risen to 7.5 from 5. Later in the US, we have the American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for last week, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.